Hello friends, Jeff here from House of Heresy and back again with another pack cracking episode. Today we're going to take a look at the Secret Lair Commander deck that just came out from, cru uh, from Cute to Brute. Um, this one, we've probably been seeing a fair number of these. Oops, that was a terrible cut. Because um, people started getting them fairly quickly. I was actually, of all the people in my local group, I was the last one to get mine, go figure. Um, we actually had uh, two of the decks playing against each other at our normal Monday Night Magic adventures. Um, I did not actually get to personally play against it because we had enough people that we were able to do two pods at the house on, uh, on Monday this week, so I was in the other pod. And um, it seemed like they were having fun, but that game ended up going for about three hours, so... <laughs> In typical pre-con fashion, it seemed like it was a little bit slower than what uh, what you would normally uh, have for a, an EDH game. So just like the last one, um, like the uh, the coin flipping deck, you get the the fancy secret layer uh, deck box, a little divider thing. Let's throw that back in there for now. Get a cool new uh, life counter. And a poster. So you get the, sorry, probably not going to be able to do this where I can get the whole thing in. Oh, maybe like that. Okay, so you get cute and then brute. So lovely. All right, so that aside, now we can get into the deck itself. This will probably be a fairly fast video. I'm not going to go too deep into the uh the makeup of it we're just we're going to kind of review the cards i um i know one of the more common complaints is that it doesn't feel like the deck has much of a synergy built around it like the coin flipping deck except that all the cards flip um which is more of a theme than a synergy i would say but um it does have some cool cards in here and honestly i kind of kind of wishing i bought a second one to break down because I would and I might end up breaking this one down because there's a lot of cards in here that I don't have that I would have that I would like to have <laughs> from periods of magic that I just wasn't playing in so the first one I think we got what five two four yeah it looks like so we have five of the borderless um the borderless flipping cards that are uh, on the thick card stock so that's Asika and prismatic bridge Oops. Um, Archangel Avison and Avison the Purifier, Bloodline Keeper, and Lord of Lineage, Nicol Bolas the Ravager, and Nicol Bolas the Arisen, and finally Westvale Abbey, and Ormondal Profane Prince. So those are, I don't know why they gave us all five of those, because I really don't know, like the, especially like Westville Abbey, like what would you ever use that for? But they did, um, and then we get into the five, um, and when I say all five of these, I mean like the, the thick card stock, like I can't think of a situation where you would be using a thick card stock land, um, but you know, maybe, I mean, who knows, um, usually that's reserved for the commanders, because you can kind of, can sort of make use of that I guess as you're as you're representing your commander in, in games but for the other ones it doesn't make a ton of sense so um, of the borderless cards the only card that we can actually use as a commander for this deck because it is all five colors is a Sika out of the tree because you get the prismatic bridge that is um, uh, five colors there so we'll just since we already saw these we'll go through these very quickly um, they are foil and honestly the artwork is really pretty the the foiling is nicely done we'll see if they curl hoping not um, for the time being I intend to keep this as a uh, as a deck like the the coin flipping one but we'll see I might end, like I said I might end up breaking it apart because there's a bunch of cards in here that I just I've been eyeing for other decks like all the uh, magic origins um, Planeswalkers, or uh, creatures that flip into the Planeswalkers, so um, this one turns into Gideon, 
And then on top of that, also the um, all the Ixalan ones, which of course they didn't put the best one in here. Um, growing rates of Etlamac, go figure. But they did put uh, they did put a bunch of these in here, which I, I don't have any of them, so that's pretty cool. Um, I guess we'll break it up by color because I think that's how they did it. Then you got Ondo Inversion, which can become come in as a land. This is out of Zendikar. It's nice that they kept the um, they kept all the set symbols, so you can, you can go back and track down what set it is if you don't recognize it. But they all have the Planeswalker symbol in the bottom to show that they that it's a reprint. You got Cosma, God of the Voyage, becomes the Amon Keel. I don't know if that God really sees much play. You got Jace. This is the um, the flip Jace. Search for Ascanta, which turns into the Sunken Ruin. And then we got Hagra Mauling, which comes in as a land. Liliana, so the flip Liliana. And good old Valky, God of Lies, who flips into Tybalt. Cosmic Imposter. And Voldaren Pariah. Into the polisher of bloodlines, and then we got Chandra, our magic origins, origins Chandra, Valkut Awakening, which comes in as the Stone Forge. Another one of the call time gods there, which come, probably not going to have enough room to lay all these out. And then we got Nissa, the Flip Nissa. Tolvar's Huntmaster. So there's a little bit of synergy with a few cards when it comes to like the um, the werewolves and stuff, but for the most part, you're probably not going to see much in the way of like tribal synergies in here. We got Arlen Cord, Arlen the Pax Hope, which I don't think Arlen Cord yeah, must flip. Yep, okay, that's allied. Turns into Arlen Embrace by the Moon. Now we got Arlen Pax Hope, which it turns into Arlen the Moon's Fury. Um, let's see, this one's got the Disturb one from Midnight Hunt. And then another Ixalan Flipland. And another one, sorry, it's out of the uh, picture there. So yeah, <clears throat> this is basically it. There, there are a few cards that don't flip, but I think they just provide synergies with cards that do. Myla turns into Luca. Plarg from the uh, Strixhaven. So they, they've been doing a lot of the, the, um, the modal face cards or whatever they call them. Uh, starting, obviously they've been in existence for longer than this, but starting with Zendikar, they really have been including them a lot more frequently in the different sets. So, um, so that, that's where we're seeing a lot of this drawn from. And we got Sanctum of the Sun, Dowsing Dagger. Now this is one that a couple of my friends enjoy playing with. Thematic Compass, Treasure Map. We got lots of the Ixalan ones, and then they gave us all ten of the Pathways, which is really nice. Um, there's. A, it's kind of hard. I mean, we'll see like with this reprinted since it didn't, it, w it wasn't like a super long one. I'm not going to flip all the pathways. If you want to take a look at them, go for it on Scryfall or something, but they're all there. All 10 of them. Got them from call time all the way to Zendikar. Um, but they, they did a nice job of including a lot of cards that haven't seen a lot of reprints. So, um, so I think there is some degree of value in this, which is why I'm kind of wishing that I had Picked up a second one. Uh, Balagid Recovery into Sanctuary, which is definitely one of the better, um, uh, one of the better uncommons out of um, what was that? Zendikar Rising. Yeah, Garrick transforms into the Veil of Cursed. Elbrus the Binding Blade. This is one that is not does not flip. So say whether like Captain, but you can go search for. Legendary permanent and bring it into the battlefield. So I guess technically Sissé actually could be an alternate commander because she has all five colors as well. 
So there's another option. Um, I think the prismatic bridge is probably a little bit cleaner if you can get it out. Um, well, actually, I guess this lets you search for specific ones, but only legendaries. I don't know. It's kind of a toss up. Uh, Urza's Ruin is Blast, so playing into that legendary theme. Sepulta Primal Dawn. This does not flip. Sphinx of the Second Sun, one of my favorite cards out of Commander Legends. Let's shoot get. It's a little confusing, but it's got some cool stuff there. Beast Whisper, always a good card. Guardian Project, another solid card. Jorel, um, I think this, yeah. So that's just for, I guess that's for card draw. Mira, Soul of the Accord. So, we do have, yeah, kind of some oddball ones. One of the best uh, CDH commanders there, Kinnon. Under Prodigy, one of the top ones at least. So that's, he's definitely a solid addition in there. Time Wipe, Utter End, give you some, some targeted and board wipe removal there. Triplicate Titan, and then some lands. So I think these are, so we got the Cycling Lands, we got the World Tree, which is a nice addition. But we do have a few gods in here. I probably wouldn't use, I probably wouldn't use the, the Wooburg ability, but the um, giving all your lands uh, tap to add one man of any color once you get six or more is pretty solid. Diluvian Primordial. Um, Pongify, another classic. That's a, definitely a solid inclusion. Butcher of Malakir. Pretty mean card. Beast Within. Good targeted removal there. Farseek is great. Ramp. Harmonize, so set of card draw, Tyler's Provisioner, that's another good one. Putrefy, some more removal. So it also, I'm noticing that there there is some, they're they highlighting some cards for, um, to put tokens into play, which might be, actually I'm not sure what exactly, I'd have to go back and look and see what the true synergies are with that, but there's some token generation in this deck. Alter of the Pantheon, um, Arcane Signet, Chromatic Lantern, makes total sense for this deck. Commander Sphere, Falwar Stone, Meteor Golem, Sandstone Oracle, of course Soul Ring, wouldn't be a precon without it. Command Tower, definitely necessary with five colors. Evolving Wilds, Exotic Orchards, one of the, uh, some of the tapped triumphs there. They have there's three of them at least. Uh, Path of Ancestry, some Snowland, or a Snowland, so there, there we go. There's the other, or more of the Tap Triomes. Terramorphic Expanse, Vivid Grove, uh, Woodland Chasm, and some Basic Lands. And then we got our tokens in the back here. So vampires and zombies, vampire and ape, wolf, and a shy of the world or the awoken world. I'd be curious to see if these these tokens end up getting any value because they're all from they got different sets on each side. I'm um, so sorry. So that was wolf and vampire, wolf and soldier, another wolf and a cat, pest and Luca, pest and Jace, beast. And Liliana, Plant and Chandra, Cleric and um, Arlen, got Elf and Tybalt, um, Treasure and Gollum, Clue and Gollum, Food and Gollum, and then Delver of Secrets. So this one was not part of the, um, not part of the deck itself. This was the bonus card, I believe. I'm pretty sure that this was not, not one of the cards that was listed in the 99. We got Delver of Secrets and Insectile Aberration. So there you go. Put that up there. So that was the deck. Um, went through it kind of fairly quickly. Um, I'm not going to pass much judgment on it. I haven't had a chance to play with it yet. I, it was played, but I didn't get a chance to actually really see it or interact with it because uh, I was playing in my own pod. But it seems like it's fun. Um, it's, uh, I don't know if, 
the two decks playing in the same pod were what caused the game to go to three hours, or what uh, what the exact backstory was behind that. It's definitely a long game of Commander, but <laughs> um, seems seems interesting. Um, you could definitely do worse for a precon. Um, for the price point, we'll see. Um, I think honestly, the now, now that I've got a close look at the tokens, those are probably going to carry some value because usually emblems are a little bit pricier. We'll see what uh, we'll see where that falls, but that's kind of cool that they included all those in there. Um, and then yeah, they just have they have a bunch of cards that haven't had reprints yet, so that that's kind of nice too. If you're looking for um, a bunch of the Ixalan ones, which in and of themselves I think are fairly cheap because they didn't have growing rights of Itlamak in here. Um, same thing with the battle or uh, the Magic Origins, um, flipping Planeswalkers like Jason, Liliana, and stuff. I don't think they are super expensive, but they also haven't had a reprint yet. So, all right, well that's uh, that's the deck. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Just a quick down and dirty, taking a look at the cards themselves. There. Um, if you liked what you saw, please give us a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Always happy to uh, have more su subscribers jump on the the train here. We uh, we do put out new content every week. And throw some comments down there. Did anyone else pick up this deck yet? Or do they intend to pick it up on the secondary market? Um, has anyone had a chance to play with it? Actually, that's probably the better question. I'm curious to hear how it plays from those that have actually used it. Um, I know it's been slowly reaching people's hands over the last like four or five days, but I'm curious if anyone's got any games in yet. So um, thanks again, everyone, and until next time.